I fell in love with wildlife long before photography. I'm categorically sure that all animals have souls, have personalities, they're all characters. It's a capturing of a moment, but you've got to experience that moment first, and if you don't feel that moment, you're not going to capture it. Fine art for me, it's about having a window into the world and you're seeing through their eyes. This is Whistle Jacket by George Stubbs and the thing which I find absolutely fascinating about Stubbs's work is he's really the first artist in my mind to kind of really put wildlife as the centre stage. So in many ways in my work is kind of a continuation of that. We're here in South France, the Camargue, which is the home to the White Stallions. The skill and composition, all the great masters, it's really what put them above the rest. So there's so much to learn from that, and that's relevant whether that's painting or photography. So the way that they depict horses in, in traditional format, it's been hugely inspirational, so I kind of really want to get back out here and think about some of those lessons and apply some of that in the field. For me, the absolute critical importance in wildlife photography is to be authentic and representative and really show nature in its true state. And whether right or wrong, you see a lot of photographs of the Camargue horses crashing through waves and it's not really their natural state. They're actually very gentle, very calm, very docile. And so I really see it as my privilege to kind of come out here and, and show them as just that and hopefully capture their beauty and show in pictorial form why that is more beautiful and why they're better off as they are. We're here now in the marshes, which is the real kind of homeland of the horses, and I had a really, really great interaction with quite a large group, and they're just so chilled out. You can get really close, they're actually quite inquisitive. The more animals are allowed to be themselves, the better for the photograph, because you're capturing how they actually look in their real state, and they're always better off that way. So I think approaching them in a way that makes them at ease gives your photograph at ease. And the great thing with these horses is that they are relaxed and they are calm, and you do have time often to create a composition but they're also so interactive with each other and with you that they're often ruining that composition so you still only have seconds to make it and so it still has that kind of thrill of wildlife photography. I think pre-visualisation in wildlife photography is absolutely what sets fine art apart. You have such limited time to work with these animals and such little control. You need to know very clearly what you're looking for before you've taken it, because when that moment presents itself, you've got to be ready to take it. You haven't got time to think about it, and when you've missed it, you've missed it. It's not coming back. So I'm just trying to get one of them by themselves. I've got this really interesting kind of band of cloud, vertical through the shot, and I kind of want to just align it in the middle kind of use it as a leading line into one of the horses. I'm really lucky to be working with gear that I trust implicitly. I've worked with Nikon for coming on eight years now and they've never let me down. You know, I go to some of the roughest environments in the world, sand, water, the works, and I've yet to have a problem. So you can't ask for more in, in wildlife photography. We've been focusing a lot on wide angle, getting low. So I kind of just want to mix it up a little bit, stick in some sort of full face portraits. You're just waiting for a moment where there's a really nice, clean composition. No distracting elements, nothing in the background that's going to detract from the photograph. Just trying to keep it super simple. For me, optical quality is the single biggest consideration. I'm looking to print on a large scale and clarity and sharpness are absolutely paramount. If we're talking top side photography, then I am never without a Z7 II and the 85 and 35 millimeters are never out of my bag ever. I tend to like to work wide. It allows me to get close to a subject and that just really reveals the context and the atmosphere and the mood. 
then I quite often like to work with a kind of a medium telephoto, so like a 70 to 200, maybe a 300. And that just allows me a slightly different perspective. You can kind of really detail on an eye or a whisker and just create something a bit more abstract. Oh, super lucky, we've had just a fantastic last day. Had a really killer sunset. Light has been absolutely golden. I've been really lucky with the stallions, they've been really interactive. It's just been such a privilege to be out here with these beautiful white horses. I think working in monochrome, it's a fantastic medium for detail. So, you know, the white stallions are an absolute ideal subject, particularly with these clear Camargue skies we get. Often with a little bit of atmospheric haze on the horizon just means that you get this very neutral palette. So it obviously works very well in a large format. So when I think about my wildlife photography, there's really two key elements, and that's the fine art side of it, but also that animal interaction and that authentic experience. And they both have to be hand in hand, otherwise one is lost. I think a lot of photographers feel that if you're not getting an amazing photograph every day, it's a wasted day, and it's just not the case with wildlife photography. So little is in our control, and everything you do every day, even if you don't get a photograph from it, you've learned something. You can always take that kind of learning forwards and apply it to your future work.